I'm Phil Hill, and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today, we're here with Bob Hoare and Natalie Salverson, both from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Bob, could you tell us a little bit about the project you're working on? Sure. It started a little over a year ago. We were uh, seeing a rising number of students showing up at the university with the need to study their developmental math skills. Mm -hmm. The students were, in all other respects, looked like they were going to be successful at the university, but they would have needed to take a remedial level math course um, based on their entrance exams. Mm -hmm. So we put together a course and delivered it online. Mm -hmm. It was to a small group. It was a pilot that involved 38 students who had placed and it was successful. 37 out of the 38 made it into the credit-bearing math course that they were looking for. So they were able to start um, on track, and we called it the Fast Track Program, and uh -huh. help students fast track into their college-level math credit-bearing um, course. Sure. And around that same time when we were seeing those successes, um, the, the call for proposals came out from the Bill and, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, mm -hmm. and they were basically asking universities to study that college readiness level mathematics and, and, and other areas. We focused on math because that's where our project was and uh, offered it in the spring sure. and gathered a great deal of data. And now we are studying that data, seeing if we have on the, the same impact on the large mass that we had on that small group. Sure, and since uh, you have data from the first pilot in 2012, plus you already have some initial data that you're working with analyzing in the MOOC context. So Natalie, tell me, what are you guys learning so far? Sure, well the, the larger MOOC had a much more diverse audience than the first one it, because of the, the openness sure. of the course. So there were students who were involved in the MOOC because they were required to by their high school teacher or from the college level, but also people who expressed just a general interest in going back to school or in furthering their education, preparing for the college entr entrance exams like the sure. ACT. So it was a really diverse group of learners that we had, um, ages like 11 to 88, families who said, well, I want to help my student with their homework. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the more interesting components of looking at the larger program were people's motivations for participating and wanting to be better at math and, and looking at that as, as almost a life skill in terms sure. of being able to move forward in their job or in future education opportunities. So I think those motivations were probably some of the most interesting components as we've started to look at, at the MOOC itself and then analyzing how the students did in the MOOC based on what their motivation was for participating. So given the fact that we're tr just now learning what's mm -hmm. happening with MOOCs, we're applying this uh, pretty new, what do you guys think that we'll actually know a year from now about MOOCs that we don't know today? I think we'll have a better sense of what works for different types of learners in the okay. MOOC environment as far as perhaps how long they've been out of school, how that affects how they do on, on the various quizzes. Our MOOC is structured in a certain way because it's a math MOOC. Now, obviously, there's going to be differences depending on discipline. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one thing that I would I would see is is which types of um, material and and quizzing and and those kinds of things that are applicable to the different motivations of learners and and uh, maybe how long they've been out of school. Sure, Bob. Yeah, I think the the faculty at the university want to have better prepared students, and students want to show up as prepared as they could get. And we're now seeing this as perhaps one of the better ways to make that happen. It, in the past, we'd had summer bridge programs. We'd had a, a number of different ways in which students could get up to speed. But by, the, by their structure, they were going to be small. Um, this is a way that we could reach across the state, across the system, and maybe around the world and help a, a much broader base. And it matters because remediation, we know, is something that does prevent students from completing that degree. And sure. that's obviously our goal is we want students to complete their college degree. Great. Well, a fascinating project that you're working on. So I want to thank Bob Hoare and Natalie Salverson for your uh, time today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.